Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you the real reason why last night's Steelers bingo game was a disgrace. And I'm Colin Coward, and I'll tell you LeVar Ball's plan. It's already failed. Speak for yourself starts now on a Tuesday. I thought last night's game, second half especially, was pretty Terrific. captivating. I, I, I wish we could have had it framed differently. All right, hello and welcome. We're joined now by Fox NFL analyst Tony Gonzalez and Hall of Famer Eric Dickerson. Let's move to Cincinnati, where the Steelers came back to beat the Bengals, but the outcome was overshadowed by other events. First, Pittsburgh's Ryan Shazier was rushed to the hospital with a scary back injury where he is still recovering today. And later, some big hits on Vontez Burfecht and Antonio Brown drew both flags and outrage, including from the announcing crew. An ugly night. I think the players need to think, John, about what they're doing to each other, what they're doing to themselves, what they're doing to the image of the league, fan interest. Spending too much time, Sean, mm -hmm. trying to make it right. Even Sports Illustrated's Peter King joined in, tweeting, quote, Imagine being a parent with a child who loves football and want to play. You're watching this game and you ask, how could I let my child play anything other than flag football ever? But after the game, Big Ben offered a somewhat different take. Ben, how would you explain just kind of the viciousness and the brutality of this game? AFC North football. Is it? Yep. All right, both <laughs> players who delivered those hits, Juju Smith-Schuster and George Ioloka, have been suspended one game. Cowherd. You have an issue with the physical play of that game last night. I don't. Now, the Ryan Shazier hit, uh, which was a legal hit, uh, is terrifying. And, and it make, I didn't see it live. I tuned into the game about 15 minutes in. That makes me sick to my stomach. Um, and I, that's something you, I kept wanting for more information on him. And the news appears to be more positive today. Mm -hmm. The rest of the game is like I've always thought of NF football players almost like rock climbers that if you get into that business for 20 years, it's almost an understanding, it's dangerous, and there's gonna be some injuries. You're gonna fall, you're gonna slip. It's innate, it's part of it. Um, I didn't, I thought the game was incredibly captivating, and if you say that now, uh, you will be criticized. You don't understand the violence of it. I don't feel like I have to apologize for A, feeling sick to my stomach with Ryan Shazier, and loving the rest of the night, and thinking this is why I love the sport, it's tough. It's a physical sport. If you love boxing, if you like the UFC, how can you not love football? I mean, again, there were two illegal hits in that game last night. There was one dirty hit. The hit on Antonio Brown was a dirty hit. Yes. Juju Smith-Schuster's hit was illegal in the modern NFL, I get it. It was not a dirty hit. Burfick was trying to make a play on the football and a guy cleaned his clock and 10 years ago, we would all have been saying he got jacked up and high-fiving each other and it's one of the greatest hits. Yeah. A bully in the National Football League got what was coming to him. The broadcast of that game was an embarrassment. They tried to slam football every chance they get. If you don't like it, don't broadcast it, don't watch it. But football is a physical contact sport. Everybody that signed up and is making this money, they know what they're getting into. That game was not dirty. There was one dirty hit at the end of the game. It, was, it yeah. happens. The, the end zone hit is, I hate watching that. The Gronk hit, the end zone hit. To me, that's not what football is about. You know, there's a certain thing about football that I like. There's a culture in football, even though you're going against each other, you never go for the knees. You don't go upstairs. Players know you're take, it's a brotherhood. The, the end zone hit, I don't like. The Gronk hit a day ago, two days ago, I don't like. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. I just want to hear what you got to say. <laughs> well, the, the the reason reason I, I got to <laughs> laugh. I'm, go ahead. The reason I can't, I, I'm saying I can't wait to hear what Eric, because of the league where he played in and the era he played in. <laughs> I mean, that, I don't think anything all about those it. Hits all the hits are, is, is absolutely Every fine. Crunch them. course. I grew up watching this tape on how to hit and Ronnie Lott going over the middle. When I came into the league, Rodney Harrison, if I went over the middle, he's trying to take my head off. He wants the crowd to go, ooh. And you don't get a flag for that. So that is just the old school football. Game. Like he said, AFC North football, that's exactly what it was. But the NFL does not want that. And don't get it twisted. Don't tell me that the NFL, when we have our little seminars at the beginning of the seasons and all that stuff, they're saying, hey, we're trying to take that, those type of hits out of the game. We don't want our game to disappear from the kids and the mothers that are watching it. Uh, and so the commentators probably have to, they're probably told, I'm not saying that, I'm not, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I would assume 
that something's going on where they're saying, he, you have to talk this up a little bit. You have to make it seem at least like we're trying to make the game safer. And maybe they are. I really do believe it. They're trying to take the head out of the game. Uh, but that's, to, to me, that's what, the thing about it nowadays, these athletes are bigger, stronger, and faster. People ask me, how would you play 17 years and only get hurt twice? And I said, because I wasn't fast enough to get hurt. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I was quick, but I wasn't that fast. These guys are running four fours, running into people. That's going to hurt you when, they, when the impact comes. What did you make of it? Look, man, uh, this is not patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. This is football. You said it best. When I played, Ronnie Lott used to launch himself. You knew, hey, I don't want to be on their highlight tape. I don't want to make their highlight tape. The hit by Juju Schuster was a clean hit. I mean, he hit him. Why, why do you want him to hit him? He hit him in the chest. I mean, the wrong part, he, okay, he stood over him, but like Antonio Brown said, karma, karma. It's the dirtiest karma, player in karma, football. Dirtiest player. Karma's a mug. Man, you got to understand, when you sign up to play football, you know you're going to get hit. That's like being a race car driver and say, you know what, I just want to go 50 miles an hour. No, everybody else is going 200. You've got to go 200 too. Football's a physical sport. Now, you said one thing. You don't want to chop players in the knees. That's dirty. Yeah. You know, we know, you know who the dirty guy is. But guys by are. the way, it, it polices itself. If, if there's a guy going for legs, his teammates will come up to him like, dude, you do that, they'll do it to me. Yeah, you got yeah it. I mean, so if, if a guy in your team went for the other tight end's knees, you'd go to him. Yeah. This sport largely polices itself and has for 50 years. And S Smith Schuster's hit was part of that policing process. Vontez Burfecht, biggest bully in football, for years. got what was coming to him. I, listen, I, I don't know if y'all watched the game with the sound on. I, I did. Oh, I did. Okay, and, and so I, I'm just going to tell you this, and, and people are going to get upset with me. I'm saying I'm going too far. The whole commentary, I was listening, I was like, well, hold on. When I listen to John Gruden, when he's calling the Andy Reid game, who he likes, I, it never goes this direction. It's all about the play calling and how imaginative it is, blah, blah, blah. And so now I got two defensive coaches, Marvin Lewis and Mike Tomlin. I got two black coaches. And, and now I'm getting to what a disgrace this game was. It just didn't land right. It didn't sound right with me. It just sounded like, oh, this game has gotten too ghetto and this is a disgrace. And, and I'm just sorry. And again, <laughs> I've been critical of Marvin Lewis and Mike Tomlin for their previous games with the Steelers, but there was no extracurricular. When the whistle blew, the play stopped. There was no pushing and shoving after the game. And they were framing this game as if it was some kind of disgrace to football. And I'm sorry, I was offended by it. I was ben, offended ben, by ben it. Ben Roethlisberger said it best. It's NFC North football. When you play in a certain conference, you play a certain team. When we played the 49ers, that's the kind of football we got. You knew you were going to get hit in the mouth. You got up. You knew what it was all about. And so this is, this is a this is a. Physical, physical When game. Lisa Salters asked that question, she, she used what they call trigger words. Yeah. How do you explain the brutality? And he said, no, 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 no. I'm not going there. Mm -mm. It this is AFC. Asked by, again, the, the entire broadcast sounded like people that didn't like football, uncomfortable with football is. Don't broadcast again. Hi guys, Colin Coward here. Before the show moves along, I wanted to tell you that Speak for Yourself is brought to you by Freshly. Freshly delivers fully cooked, prepared meals straight to your door. No more coming home, wondering what's for dinner, because Freshly's team of chefs and nutritionists are here to save the day. Skip the shopping, chopping, and cleaning. Boom, cheers, they're fully cooked. All you have to do, heat them up. Each meal ready in only three minutes. Delivery and takeout, hit and miss, you know that. Sometimes it comes cold. Why run the risk? How about guaranteed quality meals from Freshly? Easy, no dishes to worry about. Freshly's menu has it all. Sicilian style chicken parm, Mediterranean shrimp bowl, sweet and sour chicken. These meals are restaurant quality. To try Freshly out, go to freshly.com slash Fox Sports to get $20 off your first week. That's six meals for just $39 plus free shipping. This offer is only valid for a limited time. Go to Freshly.com slash Fox Sports. 20 bucks off, free shipping. That's pretty good. Consider dinner done with Freshly. Now let's get back to the show. Given the outrage around this game, it's perhaps not surprising that both Juju Smith-Schuster and George Iloka were suspended for those hits. 
but uh, the one game ban they received was the same as what Gronk got for this blatantly dirty hit that put Buffalo's Tredavious White in the concussion protocol. Whitlock, you have an issue with these players receiving the same punishment as Gronk. Issue. A major issue. And this is where I'm, go I'm going again. The whole thing, and I'm not someone that plays the race card, but I'm just telling you, I'm watching this game last night, and I'm going, what are they watching and what are they talking about and what are they setting the table for? And the NFL seems to me have fallen for the bait because Rob Gronkowski, after the whistle, jumps on top of somebody and clubs them, puts them in the concussion protocol, he gets a one-game suspension. We got two guys here in this game last night that were making plays before the whistle blew. They were making plays in an instant, and yes, they were dirty. You can't compare these two. Rob Gronkowski, after the whistle, put someone in a concussion protocol. These two guys making decisions in a snap in a live football game that's very competitive. How can they get the same penalty as Rob Gronkowski? This is BS. Yeah, it's almost like, you know when you go to an airport, there's the control tower and the people that sit up there and tell how that, you would hope they know aviation because they're controlling it. Wouldn't you think the NFL would be experts in football? How could you watch Gronk <laughs> and Juju Smith-Schuster and say, yeah. that's the same thing? Like, like, we look to you, NFL. Now, they've, they've been clunky with domestic violence. They have struggled with things. But you should know football. Nobody that knows football watches Gronk and says, that's the same as Juju Smith-Schuster. Those are two different football plays entirely. Like this, to, to me, when it happened, the day it happened, I think I talked to you, I'm like, Gronk, that's a two to a three gamer with Gronk. Like, I, I thought the Gronk stuff was as bad as anything I'd seen outside of, like, the Tlaib fight. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I would even classify it. The Tlaib Crabtree fight and Gronk, that's the same category. That is egregious. That Juju Smith is, that's a fine. Yeah. That's Give me $20,000, take it out of his pocket, but you don't put, you hurting the whole team over a football play. Well, to, to leave and and, and who's, uh, Crab Crabtree, Crabtree fighting, they're they're actually looking at each other. You know, we, we're fighting. You know, I know what's going on here. You've got a player intercepts the ball, down on his back, face down. Now Gronkowski, not with his right elbow, but his left elbow with all this pad with it's metal up under that. He knows what he's doing. So most definitely, how do you say uh, that's the same as a hit that happened with? Uh, Juju Schuster in the game before and, and in, the, in the end zone with Antonio Brown. No way. That, I'm like you. That should be a two or three game suspension. But the big thing is, if I'm a Buffalo Bill, I got buddies that play for other teams too. Defensive backs talk. So I wouldn't be surprised if somebody took a shot at Gronkowski. Say, That's you know, a good point. You, you know what? You know what? Hey, I, I, we saw on film what he did to you. Oh, don't worry. We'll take care of it. We'll, we'll get it. We'll, we'll, get you. we'll catch him standing around the pot. We'll catch him standing around the pot. By the way. I mean, that was the football we played. I'm and just, that's why the NFL should have come down harder on Gronkowski. Yes. If they punish him properly, Look at this. That's just there brutal. is no retaliation. That's yeah, that, that's some WWF ridiculous stuff. And, and, and the NFL, miss, they missed it here. They, they flat out missed it. And it makes you wonder who is who, who's, who's calling the shots over there. And I don't know if it's social media, the pressure. Because I always like to think, why? What? what Where's the common sense there? Because there's no common sense there. And I would think that it's because they're trying to send that message to the mothers. Football's declining right now. The image of the NFL, Colin Kaepernick, all this other stuff, they're trying to say we are safe, but instead of embracing who we really are, and that is a tough physical game, that's how this was built, that's what made the billions of dollars, I, I just don't understand what they're thinking right now. And then going back to your point, Juju, when you stand over a guy like that, though, afterwards, like, what do you think's going to happen next time? When you play this game, the next yep. time these two tee off against each other, expect the same kind of game because it's going to be physical and it's going to be fun to watch, and I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Smith Schuster made a mistake standing over top of him. But, but I, I will, again, he, here's what the, the NFL is too controlled by optics right now. This game was on Monday Night Football. There was all this social media controversy, and Peter King's tweeting about it, and this guy's tweeting about it. Whereas the uh, Gronk thing happened, I think, in the second half of the game. The it game was, was over. The game was over, and no one was watching and paying attention. It wasn't a big national game like Monday Night Football. That can't be your decision-making, though, because Gruden and Sean McDonough made this a big deal. We're going to overreact, 
instead of finding these guys and making sure we talk to both head coaches, we're going to give them the same punishment as Gronkowski. They've just set off people like me that are sitting there, how? How? Why was this game Monday night so bad, so reprehensible that we had all this conversation about one dirty hit? Everything else, the Schuster Smith, or the Smith Schuster hit may be illegal, but it wasn't dirty. And all of a sudden, we act like football died last night on Monday Night Football, <laughs> like it was the malice in the palace, the Pistons, Pacers, and it just wasn't. It was. Uh, it's unfair to these guys. I agree. I, I, I agree. <laughs> Please, I'm someone. glad we all like football. Well, I, like football. football. I love football. Well, you know, football. I, the first couple of minutes of that game, the first quarter, I'm like, this is a boring football game. Now, when they start hitting, I'm like, oh, now this is football here now. I like this. <laughs> Ratings were up last night. For the, they were, actually. Let's move to Green Bay, where Aaron Rodgers practicing as the scout team quarterback. I bet that scout team is pretty good. <laughs> uh, targeting a week 15 return for the quarterback they thought could be lost for the year when he broke his collarbone back in week six. Not surprisingly, the team is now in awe of Rodgers' rapid recovery with running back Jamal Williams saying, quote, he came back and he just flicked it. I was like, dang. I was like, wow. Are you sure that guy was injured? I was like, that's far. I couldn't even do that on a good day. I mean, he flicked it. I feel like he didn't even throw it. He just flicked it. <laughs> Whitlock, you think Aaron Rodgers can save the Packers season? One problem. I, Aaron Rodgers can save a lot of seasons. The problem he's got is the Minnesota Vikings, I think, in week 16. Minnesota Vikings right now, to me, are the best team in football. And I think it's going to take 10 and 6 to get into the playoffs in the NFC. Yeah. That means they got to win them all. I don't think they can beat the Vikings even with Aaron Rodgers making his magic. The one thing I'll say, though, is that when it comes to baseball pitchers and quarterbacks, we watch their arms, but it's really all about legs. It's that drive for a pitcher, a quarterback. Aaron, in his career, this will be the freshest his legs have ever been in December. So he's been sitting for eight weeks, and he's been watching film, and he's been resting, and he hasn't taken those shots. And when you talk to quarterbacks, it doesn't matter who they are. Tom Brady, I, Drew Bledsoe's a friend of mine. He's like 45. He's like, I can still spin it. <laughs> he goes, I can throw it all day. He goes, legs are gone. Marino will tell you. Legs are gone. Aaron's legs will be the best they've ever been in December. And if his legs are good, his arm's amazing, and I think they've got a shot to beat Minnesota with him. Case Keenum, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no way. First of all, they got to win the rest of their games. And let's just say they lose to Cleveland this week. They're not. Let's, that ain't let's, yeah. let's just say it happens. It's just the NFL. Let's just say they lose to Cleveland. Now, they're going to be, what, nine? If they win the rest, of be nine. Six and seven. seven. Yeah, and nine and it's seven. Over. So would you bring him back then? Huh. I don't know why. You put the jackass suit on everybody. You should have a chance to get the, uh, to me, I think the greatest quarterback that I've ever seen play hurt. It makes no sense. I mean, if, if they win, eh, maybe, maybe. I still don't think they can beat Minnesota. Minnesota's defense, yeah, you can flick it in practice. This is easy, flicking it around. But when you get them football games, when the bullets get real, <laughs> the flicking ain't happening either. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear you there, but, but if they do win and, and there's an opportunity for him to come back, I'll put him in there. But the only thing that I'd be worried about is, yeah, he can flick it, you know, especially the way Aaron throws the ball. He uses that wrist more in his shoulder anyway, it seems like sometimes. Uh, I just want to make sure if he could, can he take that hit. And, but for him, it's a calculated risk. The window's closing. Well, I love Aaron Rodgers. You know, how many more opportunities are you going to get? And especially with this football team, they're, they're pretty good. When he's there, they're, they are a different football team. Remember last year they went up to Dallas. And I thought they had no shot in the playoffs. And you saw what Aaron Rodgers did. We talked about what Russell Wilson did on, on Monday yeah. night. That's the same stuff that Aaron Rodgers does consistently. A lot, a lot. That's why I, I agree with you. He's the best quarterback I've ever seen up close and personal. Uh, so it, it, if he's back... Absolutely. Always bet on the Hall of Famer quarterback. If he's, if he's healthy and ready to go, they can win any game. By the way, 2013, we have a precedent. He hurt his collarbone. He came back late. He had to beat Chicago to get to the playoffs, and that there was the Randall Cobb touchdown. This is the play, actually. So we have a precedent. And, and, and I also think Aaron's better now than he was then. I think he's just um, better pre-snap, more savvier. I'll, let me just throw this out there, too. If the Green Bay beats Cleveland this week, then Aaron comes back. So they're 7-6, they're and six, and they have yeah. to sweep. The Packers have been competitive without him. You know, could I make the argument that actually it's helped kind of refine the team? 
they've had to play hard. They've had to have been Make more. The argument. They've had to have been more resourceful and actually play cleaner football you can without make him. The argument. Yeah. Where it falls apart. I'm just. It's talking. Minnesota. Minnesota. Right. The Rams. The Saints. And even Philadelphia. But again, I really. Minnesota, the Rams, the Vikings, I love all three of them. And so they've made do without, but they haven't faced those guys, the elite of the NFC. And in the playoffs, you can't avoid them. Again, I think Minnesota is going to be the obstacle getting in the playoffs. But even if they get there, I just don't think his supporting cast, this is a loaded NFC. Yeah, loaded, loaded. I mean, when I like when I like the Packers, without Aaron Rodgers, they're just, they're just a football team. And, you know, I think when you, when you play the Packers now, don't have Aaron Rodgers, so, uh, you know, we can beat them. So I think some teams have a tendency to bring, you know, bring it down. Oh, okay, now we got to pick it back up. You know, we thought yeah. we could beat them. All right, to New York, where Giants president John Marr fielded a range of questions in his press conference yesterday, including about Odell Beckham's future with the team. Marr declined to guarantee the team would give the receiver a long-term deal, adding that it would be a decision to discuss with the new coach and general manager. Cowherd, should the Giants consider moving on from Odell? Yeah, the colder the weather, my theory has always been, uh, the less perimeter driven I have to be. So the colder the weather, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, New England, center out. Um, you get into November, December, January, New York, road games, Philadelphia, road games, Washington, NFC, Green Bay is always good. A fragile, tiny, wide receiver. Those vertical routes dry up. I, I'm not even going to bash Odell. I'm just going to say, with a new coach and a new general manager, you need to give them a clean slate to construct the team the way they want it. Don't look. They make the new coach, new general manager, be like, man, I love Odell. I love what he's going to do in our system. That's fine. But if they want to go a di different direction, they don't need to be handcuffed by John Mars' decision to commit to Odell. John Mar is not a football person. He's going to hire football people and let them make those decisions. But, you know, as the owner, they went to him and said, you know, don't hold out. We'll, make, we'll, we'll do right by you. So now all of a sudden, when the new general manager, new head coach comes in, well, we don't, well, we, I, hey, nah, I don't, I don't want to do that now. It's, it's a bad look. Look, they don't have anything in New York. You know, the defense, you know, was supposed to be all that this year. They don't have a running game. They probably don't have a quarterback. They don't have an offensive line. If I'm New York, what do I have? Why would I go watch the Giants play? I mean, Odell Beckham is the most exciting thing they've, they've got there. So, I mean, why would you get rid of him? I mean, he's, I think he's one of the top elite receivers in the league, so you, you've got to keep him. You, you can say he's probably the most exciting player in the NFL. You, know I mean? you could say that on field, off the field, everything that he brings to the table. They're selling jerseys internationally. Odell Beckham, I went overseas this year. They talk about Tom Brady and Odell Beckham. That's who they know in the NFL. So from that standpoint, from that business standpoint, uh, as a coach and a general manager come in, how could you get rid of that? He's such a phenomenal football player. But I do know this, what, and you guys have heard this before. What does money do to people? It just it, all it does is it, it makes it, them more of what they are. It makes you more of what you are. Exacerbates who you are, and you give this guy a lot of money. You know, like you saw the Dave Chappelle skit with, with Rick James. They should have never gave you money. <laughs> that's what's going to happen here. Because I'm telling you, you give this guy money, I can see it now. He's going to create a whole new monster here. Well, well, but well, but he, it, it, it probably is worth it. I would say I'd have to keep him following. That's why you never got paid there. Well, I, never, well, I, never, man, I got pennies, man. I got pennies. I should have stayed at SMU, really. <laughs> <laughs> he finally admitted it. <laughs> Look, he's, he get, he's getting paid from Nike. He's getting $35 million from Nike, so y'all already getting paid. But you want to get paid through what you really do. That's playing football, the team that you play for. All right, welcome back. We're joined now by a Kansas City King <laughs> and former NBA coach Earl Watson and the founder of the big league, Jason McIntyre. Kansas City King? Now a different kind of Kansas City King. <laughs> Check Nine has a song, Kansas City Kings. All right, let's move to LeVar Ball, who keeps finding new ways to grab headlines, pulling middle, school, middle son LiAngelo out of UCLA because he believed his indefinite suspension for shoplifting in China was unfair. Not surprisingly, LeVar arranged a television interview to discuss the decision. China already said, okay, he made a bad mistake. We're going to drop the charges. That's the punishment they gave him. But in China for stealing, you But that's the punishment they gave years. him. Now we over here. Look, at, we got to serve some more punishment? He apologized. What is the loan process for? We only went to UCLA 
One and done. Now play basketball. I'm going to get Jello in shape. I'm going to work him out. We're going to do some other things, and he's going to be headed to the NBA. The grand plan stays the same. All these boys are going to get on the Lakers. Watch how I do this. And people are going to look up, and they say, wow, how they all get on the Lakers? Coward, LeVar is now taking two of his kids out of school and wants them to play overseas. Has he gone too far? I just wish I got more substance. I get a lot of noise. A big Balder brand's now a T-shirt company, an expensive <laughs> one. Um, Alonzo's not the best rookie for the Lakers. Forget the league. Um, and I don't like taking your kids out of school. I, I think there's this now belief that college basketball is useless, and I think there's real value in playing for Tom Izzo and Mike Krzyzewski and Bill Self and Mark Few. I think there's a lot of good coaches, and they create structure for a year, and then players... Um, you know, they move off into the NBA. So I, I, LeVar's increasingly making noise. Vince McMahon makes noise, but he's brilliant. And the Kardashians make noise, but they're brilliant and supported by the best lawyers and marketing and promotion people and fashion people in the world. I'm getting a lot of noise lo with LeVar, but I don't, I don't see a lot of substance. At the end of the day, the, the product has to be strong. And so let's call them the Kardashians. The Kim Kardashian product is real strong. Uh, Chloe Kardashian, if you like the, 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 the that product, strong. Uh, 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 Crystal, what is it? Kendall Jenner, strong product. The, the the ball kids are underachieving. Lonzo should probably be in the G League, uh, and and I, if he were any other rookie, he probably would be. Leangelo wasn't a great prospect, and he couldn't even make it through uh, the first semester of college. Uh, Melo is out of high school, so the product is deteriorating, and all you have left is LeVar's noise. Yeah, I think he's gone too far. He's overseen the, the fall of the Titanic, and he's the band. He's still playing, but the ship is sinking. Guys, you know, I've gone back and forth on LeVar. You know, he did some good things, and you've been against him most of it. And, and Whitlock, I'm coming around to you. I think you're right. Guys, this is one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen a parent in sports do. You know what he's doing, right? He's pulling his two kids out of school, and he's going to ship them overseas with the goal to sell sneakers. That's what he wants to do. Open a portal in China or somewhere in Europe and get these shoes sold because they're not moving here. Okay, he's done all he can do in Chino Hills and with the Lakers, Lonzo not really delivering yet, and he's using his kids. He's going to send them to China to sell shoes. Is, it, is that not horrible? I just am disgusted thinking about taking a, a $130,000 education at UCLA free away from your kids so you can sell some sneakers in China. So you, you played for 13 awesome. years. How do players see it? How do coaches see it? First of all, I'm just confused how we all talk about the Kardashian comparison. And we act like it didn't start in a disgusting manner. <laughs> the whole legacy. Yeah. We were talking about Good like product it's, though. The pro uh, the product? Girl. What product? product? How did it start? It's it's we can't even product. talk about that right now, yeah. right? <laughs> Not even here. So and then we look at the Kardashians now and they have this amazing product and they grew it and, and it's it's amazing. But through the process of it in the earlier shows, it took time. And the, the education at UCLA is not for free. Like, it sounds good, Co colleges say it all the time, but your time, blood, sweat, and tears, sometimes stitches, sometimes sur surgery, you're sacrificing your body, and you have to compete with other college students who just go to school. Talking about what they're doing, yeah, they want to get to Asia or China or Japan to sell sneakers, which their family owns, like every other shoe company. Yes, UCLA played in China, for not only their students to have an experience, their student athletes to have an experience, but also for Under Armour and you say to be branded in China. So what's the difference? Oh, because he's a father and he's doing it. Now, serving in suspension and being accountable for stealing, you have to be accountable for that. You have to be accountable for that. And I think he's using the, the wrong rhetoric. Instead of saying he's serving, he's accountable, we're doing something that's business-minded, just be honest about it and transparent that it is actually business-minded. I mean... Here, my question, though, Disagree is if this is about the brand, I mean, we, you can make the argument that it is about the brand. His kids are part of the brand. I'm not necessarily opposed to it just being all part of the Ball family. My question, though, is this overseas thing. Now, we do have in Europe, they have a system, academies, and they launch people into the NBA. But the guys that have gone from here over quickly, it hasn't worked as well, has it? It hasn't. You take Moutier, you take the kid OKC just drafted, they're going to be great down the line.
but they've stalled. Brandon right? Jennings. Brandon Jennings. Yeah. Brandon, Jennings. Brandon, Jennings. Brandon Jennings, but not all European players come over here are just excellent talents Let to me begin ask you, with. If your son had an opportunity um, to go to, you know, or just Michigan State, would you feel comfortable sending him to Asia? My son is two years old. Okay, if, right? he, if he was... Listen, <laughs> he knows the eight clap. He has no choice but to go to UCLA. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's not even an option, but that's my son. And I think as his father, I have every right to influence my child the way I want to influence my child. Now, what LeVar does, more power to him. We are in the business of sports is amazing, but sports is nothing without the stories. To me, this is a story. We, we're, we're watching something unfold that's uh, never I happened, go back. and I'll, it's scaring everyone. I want to go back. The product has to be strong, and I'm going to go back to the Kardashians. I figured out a polite way to say it. They're selling their sexuality, and the product is strong. They're selling basketball, and the product is weak. Again, Lonzo should be in the G League. Le LiAngelo couldn't even make it at UCLA. UCLA is celebrating right now that they're rid of him. The other two players probably are going to get back on the court sooner because they're rid of the ball. LaMelo's not even playing high school ball. The product is weak. Whatever we think about the disgusting nature of them selling their sexuality as the Kardashians, the product was always strong and still is strong. Ball product, not strong.